Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. So this episode is going to be another episode of our latent radio latency testing series here on the channel. And um, I have just finished, well yesterday, last night I finished testing the Flysky i6X. I do have the normal one, I have not tested it just yet, but I have tested this one now. So I am going to share my results. So, uh, and we are gonna compare it with the FR Sky and Eternity Evolution. However, I do apologize for the title of the uh, video here, but um, I just had to make it kind of catchy because you know nothing is super catchy about this guy But uh, this is very important information that I really want to get out so you guys know this So let's talk about the results So I'm just gonna put up the graph here right now and show you the results now I will also have this Excel. It's an Excel sheet. I will have everything in there from uh, every single sample that I've gotten as well as the uh, screenshot of the oscilloscope for every f single uh, radio I have tested so far and I'll have this on my website and it'll constantly be updated every time I get a new radio in and sometimes it might get updated before I release a video so yeah just keep checking that every once in a while the video the, the horse should be here next week as well as the spectrum they should be here possibly even tomorrow and as soon as I get them I'll just quickly just tear them apart and start testing so taking a look at this graph uh, currently on this graph what is lower the lower bar the better because the lower the bar is the less latency it has and as you can see there's three colors blue orange green blue is for fr sky orange is for Eternity evolution and the gray is for fly sky and let's start with the worst sample on the left the worst sample of the fr sky was 41.2 milliseconds so that was the, the highest latency i got from throttle input all the way down to the receiver <clears throat> running s bus d16 eight channels and on the Eternity Evolution, the worst was 17.5 uh, milliseconds, so it is twice as fast as the FR Sky. And the Fly Sky was 18 milliseconds, was the worst result or sample I have captured for this, this receiver right here, for the Fly Sky receiver transmitter. And let's go to the best samples, and this is this is pretty interesting here. So I did not expect this, and this was like a slap in the face to me. And this is where I got the motivation to named the video the way I did. Um, as you can see, the FR Sky is in blue. It's uh, This is the QX7. However, you know, the Horus might be different and the X9D might be different, which is the normal one, the FR Sky, the normal one that everyone uses. Uh, that should be on the way. Hopefully, Joshua Bard will actually try to help me get one in from get FPV. Um, so we're working on that. Maybe they do proof for uh, sending one in and we could test it. So that would be super awesome if they do. And I really want to thank Joshua out there for actually helping me um, get to that. So that's just... Yeah, I just can't thank you enough, Josh. Anyways, um, now for best samples here, we have the FR Sky QX7. It's very important QX7 because everyone is different and uh, the internals might be different from the, the regular Tyrannus and the Horus and some other ones as well. So we got 30.6 on the QX7. This was the best sample. And the Eternity Evolution was 11.8. And this is the crazy part right here. The Fly Sky, a $50 cheap radio got 6.4 milliseconds i mean i was stunned i mean I, I i just froze i was like there's no way in hell i triple double checked everything and it got also another result that was even well, it's not better it's by one millisecond more so it was pretty consistent but it's kind of all over the place um usually it tends to be on the like mid 10 to 10 to 20 but it does have those nice fast response every once in a while as you can see right there 6.4 milliseconds um, and now on the right as you can see I've averaged all the samples I've gotten and um, this is the average I've gotten so for the FR Sky 36.25 Turner's Evolution 14.6 it's more than half times faster than the FR Sky which is really a shame I think it's possibly a software issue um, I did watch the race flight video on spectrum versus um, Tyrannus and they were talking about the ADCs which is the analog digital converters so I don't know if they have hardware or software I really didn't pick it up I wasn't really paying attention too much but it was uh, they, they, they were mentioning the ADC a lot so it could be part of the thing that's causing latency or it could be some filters within the software on the FR Sky and uh, maybe we could take a look into that later I'll check the code so yeah 36.25 turns the evolution 14.6 which is more than twice as fast and the Fly Sky got even a better result, which is 13.65. Uh, it's more than, it's about one, yeah, we could say one millisecond faster than energy evolution. So the, this is pretty crazy. Um, so in reality, you know, the, the, the cheaper radio is the possibly the best radio in terms of 
um, latency. I mean, if you're into that latency and if racers are using this and another racer is using this, they might be able to tell the difference. However, you know, even with all this, I still do prefer this for some reason. I don't know why. I just do. So this, I, I really like this one. It just feels so good. But um, hopefully we'll get our hands on the TBS Crossfire. Also another motivation why I named the video as I did. Hopefully they can see this and hopefully send one us send one over to us. Because I'm very curious because if the Horus is faster than the X7 and the X9D is faster or slower than the X7, what happens if we put that module on those three and will it change the latency? So this is where my you know, my thoughts are going right now. Um, since I'll have all those three in, hopefully, if even if the TBS doesn't want to send me one, I'll, I'll save up and I'll get one. I don't have a problem. Um, maybe at the end of the month, I'll see what I can do. Um, but I, I'll try to get one in, and then we'll test them out on the other uh, transmitters and to see how they really do, because I don't know. I have no idea what to expect. I really don't. I can't wait till that Horus comes in, test it out, and see if there is a difference or not. So that, that's going to be pretty interesting. Uh, what else do we have here? Oh yeah, I also, if, I, if you've missed my previous videos, I do have a Spectrum on the way. And I'll also test the regular Flysky. I do have one of those. And um, and possibly a Radio Link. Um, if I, if I'll, I'll try to figure out a way to get a Radio Link uh, transmitter. But um, yeah, I'm going to try to get every single transmitter and test this latency. And to build a very nice graph and chart and just... Um, Keep it nice and clean, and if anyone has any ideas, they can go check it out if they're interested and they're just super obsessed with latency. Um, this is the chart that I've created, and it's pretty reliable. I got pretty consistent results. The testing method methodology seems to be very good because we don't bypass uh, the analog digital converters, if there are any, which does um, keeps our values correct. Instead of just uh, capturing from here, we're actually taking from here. So that's very good. So overall, the best out of these three is the Fly Sky, and the cheapest out of these three is the Fly Sky, and <laughs> it's crazy, you know. Um, when you compare these two together, this one's nice, you know. It has a touch screen, it has some LEDs. Not that I care about the LEDs. Rechargeable batteries. Uh, the range is probably ex almost about exactly the same because they're using the same chipset. Um, just the antennas are a bit different, I think, if I remember correctly. I forgot how this one looks like, but they should be almost exactly the same. So these two are basically exact clones of each other, except this one's actually just has a different plastic case, some LEDs, and smaller memory. So, <clears throat> yeah, so the whole point of the price of this is the form factor, I believe. And that's really it because this is a 10 channel radio and it costs 50 bucks and it comes with a uh, receiver. So this is very good. And the gimbals are exactly the same except these are see through and these are just black. So um, yeah, so that explains these now. Uh, the, exactly the same inside, like exactly except the colors. So that's something also to take note of. However, um, I will be doing some mods on these. For example, we'll be extending the range either on this one or on this one, or maybe both. I have a 1000 watt, 2.4 gigahertz amplifier, so about like that big. I've had it for like eight months now. I wanted to do it on my original Fly Sky, but I just never got around to do it. So maybe we'll just do it on this. It'll be pretty cool, pretty interesting. And I'm also getting in uh, the M7 gimbals the Hall Effect gimbals and M9s. I don't know which one's bigger and which one's smaller, and I needed two anyway, so we're gonna do mods on these two guys. So it'll be pretty cool and pretty interesting as well. And I think this video's gone too long here, so I'm, I think I'm just gonna end it here. So overall, this one was faster. Uh, I'll leave a link down to the chart or the Excel sheet with everything in it, uh, from the oscilloscope screenshots to the samples to everything. Everything you need to see, it'll be right there, everything I've gotten. So uh, you, could, you could just do your own calculations if you wanted to, you can go ahead and do that. Now, just just to put this into, you know, because this, this is pretty crazy here. Your ESC, your BL Holly 32 ESCs, our, their CPU is faster than this guy, this guy, and I think this guy also. Isn't that insane? I mean, like, for example, that Racer Star one. That thing's running on 72 megahertz. Soon we're going to be seeing dual-core ESCs, which is just, just, it's just crazy, really. Um, it's just, it's funny, too. So our ESCs are more powerful than our radios here. Um... But yeah, well, that's it, guys. So um, I'm going to end it here. This video's gone too long. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys learned something. If you guys have any questions or any suggestions, feel free to let me know. And keep checking this uh, chart out every once in a while. I will be updating it as soon as I get the transmitters in. 
it might be updated before I release the video. So if you wanted to stay updated, you can go ahead and check it out. And well, that's gonna include it for this video, guys. So if it, I hope it really helped you out there. And if you guys have any questions or any suggestions, feel free to let me know. And I will see you next time. See you guys. Take care.